natural thinking. So we need to get rid of all that, amen, so that our life can be successful with kingdom achievements. I don't know how many of you sleep eight hours. Do, do you sleep eight hours a day? Oh, you do? How many of you sleep eight? Oh, you don't have, I don't want to embarrass you. If you sleep eight hours or seven hours or some ten hours, let's say if you sleep eight hours a day, eight out of 24, that's one-third. Can you imagine spending one-third of your day sleeping? Spending one-third of your day sleeping? When God has created us and God has given us so much to do. And uh, one-third of your day sleeping, that's one-third of your life sleeping. Have you noticed that as you grow more and more mature, as you reach maybe 50, 60, 70, you don't have to sleep so many hours? That's the grace of God. <laughs> so you're not wasting so much of your life because it's coming to an end. Honestly, we waste so much of our time. Waste so much of our time. That's why I hate sickness, because the minute the person is sick, he's just wasting his time. Confined to bed or can't walk. Time wasted. Life wasted. I like to be productive. I don't want to spend my time sleeping or wallowing in self-pity. That's a waste of time. The Bible says that God will rebuke the devourer for our sake. I love to be multitasking. I love multitasking. I love to cook and listen to sermons at the same time. I love to work and do things at the same time. I love being productive. You know, what's good about money is that money can buy you time. Instead of traveling by boat, you can travel by plane. <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. Instead of walking, you can go by car. Time is very expensive. So if you believe in prosperity, you need to work hard. If you want to be successful, you have to be willing to work hard. There are no successful people that are lazy bones. Lazy bones won't be successful. If you love to sleep, the book of Proverbs says, surely you'll end up being poor. So we need to change. We need to change our thinking and ask the Lord to rejuvenate us, to energize us, to give us strength, to give us mental power, to give us physical energy, amen, emotional soundness. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's look at Psalm 1 verse 3. Psalm 1 verse 3. We're talking about the success of your salvation and the achievements of the kingdom. I just now said you need to expect from yourself. What do you expect from yourself? I mean, as you, all, you, all of you can tell I'm a woman. You know, usually the Chinese believe that for a woman is that your role is to get married, raise up your children, that's it. They expect you to cook, take care of your kids, and then retire. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. No, I don't like that. You know, no, don't, don't limit me to the role of just being a mother, being a cook in the house. No, I can do a lot more than that. Amen. And God is in the business of raising up women. God is in the business of raising up women. So you need to have expectations. Ask yourself, what do you expect from yourself? Do you expect yourself to be successful? Do you expect yourself to be an achiever? Do you expect yourself to be an influencer? Ask yourself those questions and be willing to pay the price, pay the price, pay the price. Amen. Hallelujah. Be willing to pay the price. When we first got into China, we didn't have any comfortable hotels like we have now, but we were willing to pay the price. Glory be to God. We didn't even, at night it was so cold, we didn't even go to the toilet. You know, they had something, I don't know what they call it in, uh, in English, like a potty, yet yeah, you call it a potty. So we had a potty in the room. And the embarrassing thing is that you had to go there and everybody is in the same room. <laughs> but we're all ladies, but, but still, like, but that's paying the price. That's what you had to put up with. <laughs> 
Amen. The Bible says, do not despise the days of small beginnings. And small beginnings sometimes can be quite gross. <laughs> but you press. Hallelujah. That's how you find out from your heart your passion for God. Your passion for God. Your passion for God. And then I remember when we first went to China, we went to the pastor's house. That's where the meetings are. And, we, we, and then we got into the toilet. I mean, they were so good. You know, the toilet, they built it for us. They built the toilet for us. Because in, in China, the toilets, you don't sit. You don't sit on the toilet. You, um, what do you call them? Squat. squat. Yeah, you squat. <laughs> but they built a special toilet for us so that we can sit. But it was yucky. Because <laughs> the flush wasn't working. <laughs> and there were potties around the toilet. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. <laughs> and what's worse is that because it doesn't flush, I have to look for water to flush it, right? <laughs> So I was looking, you know, I got in and then, oh, it's so dirty, I can't use it. And then I have to look for water to flush it, you know, praise the Lord. And I started teaching them, you need to flush after you've gone to the toilet. <laughs> and they were in church and I was preaching and they would be in the middle of my sermon, they go, Doo. and I taught them, no, you don't, you're not allowed to spit in church. And then we had signs everywhere, no spitting in church. <laughs> I remember I had my meals, you know, my first meals uh, with the pastors in China. And then uh, we ordered, you know, we ordered like some prawns, right? Ordered them some prawns and ordered chicken. And to my surprise, they were eating and all the prawns, uh, what do you call them? Shells on the floor, like they would be eating and a chicken box. <laughs> and I said, no, you don't do that. <laughs> and I asked for extra plates. You, you put all your bones and all your shells on the plate. <laughs> and then I asked for chopsticks, right? Because like everybody would be sharing the same plate of food and, and <laughs> it's very yucky, you know, especially if it's a bowl of soup. You know, they use the spoon and put that soup into their mouth and then they used the same spoon and put it back into the soup. <laughs> and I said, no, you have to share your chopsticks and share your spoons. <laughs> we have, you know, spoons that we use only for, the, only for the dishes. And you use your own set of spoons and chopsticks for your own personal hygiene. <laughs> so those were the beginning days. But now they're all very good, you know. As soon as we sit down, they ask for public chopsticks and public spoons. And all that. So praise the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. So that's the success of salvation. You ask them, weren't they saved? Of course they were saved. <laughs> but it's just that they didn't know how to behave. All right, so we're talking about the success of salvation. We're talking about achievements of the kingdom. Amen? So we need to desire achievements. I could have stayed a Christian in Brisbane, but I desire to do something for God. Ask yourself, do you have the desire to do something for God? Ask yourself, do you have the desire to do something for God? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Be a proactive Christian. Psalm 1 verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth. Have you noticed that it's only when you're planted that you bring forth? To the degree that you're planted, you bring forth. Amen. To the degree that you're planted, you bring forth. Amen. We did not succeed on the first day. I've been going there, I think this is the sixth year. So all the churches in China, we had planted them, planted, planted, and now they're bringing forth, bringing forth. So like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He is the key. If you don't do, you never prosper. Prosperity comes with doing. Write it down. Prosperity comes with doing. 
Prosperity comes with doing. I believe in Christians doing business. Because doing business, you need to believe in God. You need to make right judgments. Amen? I believe that Christians should be proactive with your life. Believe in God for achievements. Amen? Believe in God for promotion. Doings out of a major priority. If you look at the Word of God, the Word of God is about doing, doing, doing. The Bible is your life manual. The Bible is not a textbook. The Bible is for doing. Amen. So when you read the Bible, highlight every scripture that is for you to do. Every scripture that is for you to do, including forgiving, including praying, including praying in tongues, including confessing the word, doing. Mark your calendar. Do you pray in tongues at least half an hour a day? That's doing. I mean, Pentecostals, we listen to sermons on tongues for so long, and yet how many of us pray in tongues? I'm talking about every day. You need to put it in your calendar and pray in tongues at least half an hour a day. Do you believe in that? The Bible says, build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Your health comes out of who you are on the inside. So that's why the Bible says, build yourself up. I need to build myself up. You need to build yourself up. Because it's out of your being that doing will come. Doing comes out of your being. Doing comes out of your being. Amen? Your being will determine your doing. When we talk about doing, we're talking about signs, wonders, miracles, success, achievements. We're not talking about putting on a mask. We're not talking about planning and doing something. We're talking about doing what God has called us to do. Amen. We believe that Jesus is no longer a baby in a manger. So the same way Christians, we should not be babies in a manger. Amen? Jesus is no longer a baby in the manger. Jesus is the shepherd. Jesus is the deliverer. Jesus is the healer. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is the King of Kings. Jesus is the Lord of Lords. If he's the King of Kings, then you have to be a king. So you have to rule over your world, your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told myself that I would never carry so much luggage into China anymore. <laughs> Because it's winter in China, so, you know, winter, the clothes are very heavy. So, I had a big luggage, and Daphne had two. So, <laughs> she had a big one and a small one. But then we had to go up, you know, sometimes we had to go up, and sometimes we had to go down. And even, even if uh, going up the escalator, you know, you still have to carry all the luggage. And uh, there was one time with Daphne that her luggage fell off almost down the escalator, but praise the Lord, it didn't, it didn't go bah, 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 all the way down. So praise the Lord. But I promised myself, I said to myself, stop, don't bring so much into China. You can buy everything there. <laughs> I'm not bringing so much into China anymore. Oh, it was such a burden. It was such a burden because we had to go from province to province. You know, you had to take the train and uh, you had to carry all the luggage from place to place. It was such a burden. So, Lord have mercy. All right, going back to doing. Amen. So, the Bible is a manual for living. It's not a textbook for reading. So, praise the Lord this time because before we went to Anfei, we specifically asked could we not stay in the hotel that we stayed in last time? Because the hotel that we stayed in, they had one big flight of stairs before you could get to your room. Of course, the, like the workers would help us to carry our luggage, but I hate seeing them carry, you know, so heavy, climbing up the stairs. So praise the Lord, we didn't go to that hotel. Hallelujah. So go, go to Romans chapter 2, verse 13. In your life, don't carry so much baggage. Don't carry unforgiveness, resentment. Don't carry your bad memories of the past. Don't carry them because they will hinder your journey of faith. Whatever is in your past that's not productive, that is not good, forget it. Cast it into the sea of forgetfulness and remember them no more. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. He has given us the power to forget. The power to forget. The power to forget. Amen. So forget the bad and remember the good. <laughs> Amen. Say with me, forget the bad and remember the good. How, how many of you do spring cleaning? Spring clean? Yeah, spring cleaning, right? What do you do? Chuck off. Chuck. I love chucking things. I love chucking. <laughs> whatever you don't like, whatever is no longer useful, whatever you've put aside for over four years that you've never touched, that means you don't need them. That means you have a lot of things that you can chuck from your house. <laughs> Anything in your house that you put aside for four years that you've never touched, you don't use them. I remember we used to have, like for me, a literature student, right? I had a lot of books, literature books. So we used to keep them and kept them and we kept them. But I never touched them. I never read them. And it occurred to me, it dawned on me that space is expensive. And these books have wasted so much space in my house. So I decided to chuck them all. Put them all in the bin. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So the same in your memory bank. Get rid of whatever you don't need. Get rid of whatever you don't need. Get rid of them. So they don't hinder your life. I believe that the Lord is speaking to different people here. As I said, it's not that God is not manifesting himself. But if you're holding on to obstacles and hindrances, if you're holding on to what is toxic, holding on to what's holding you from your past, then God's hands are tied. I remember there was in one meeting before the healing took place. And the Holy Spirit kept putting into my heart, kept putting into my heart, speak to the people about forgiveness. Speak to them about forgiveness. So I spoke to them about forgiveness. I said, anybody here that you had a problem forgiving? You had a problem forgiving. Forgiving. It could be your family. It could be your friends. Anybody who had offended you. If you had a problem forgiving, lift up your hands. And there was one guy. He shot up. He just, chung, like that. He raised both of his hands. <laughs> And then I said, now, everybody, you know, you stand up and you pray with me. I said, don't consult your feelings. Just pray that you're willing to forgive and you're willing to forget. And as soon as we said that prayer, healing started to manifest. He was so joyful. It's like he was so relieved. He was so happy. Glory be to God. His face changed color. Amen. And healing started to manifest. Praise the Lord. Amen. So get rid of all the junk. Get rid of all the junk. I mean, look at it. That person has already hurt you. And you allow that person to continue to hurt you by keeping that person in your memory? Would you call that stupidity? <laughs> right? I mean, he's already hurt you. Why would you still live with him in your memory? Get rid of him. Amen. Forgive him. Forgive means don't have anything to do with him anymore in your soul. Leave him to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Say, thank you, Lord, for the power to forgive. Amen. You know that non-Christians can't forgive. Only Christians can forgive. Because forgiveness is the power of your spirit. Only Christians can forgive. The people of the world, they can't forgive. They sing about it, but they can't. They're still holding on to it. Forgiveness is a supernatural power. It's the miracle of God. Remember the word of God says, nobody can forgive but God alone. So the reason why you can forgive is because God has taken residence on the inside of you. Amen? Go to Romans chapter 2, verse 13. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So Christianity is about doing. And then if you go to James chapter 1, verse 22, but be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So don't be kept in church and just keep hearing and hearing and don't do. It's very important that you do. 
And James 1.25, James 1.25, but whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein. What does that mean? I keep looking at the Word and I see myself in the Word. My identity is from the Word. I see myself in the Word of God. The Word of God sees me good. The Word of God calls me good. The Word of God calls me a saint. The Word of God calls me a believer. The Word of God calls me a child of God. The Word of God calls me a joint heir with Jesus Christ. The Word of God calls me an heir of God. The Word of God calls me a child of Abraham. So I continue to look into the Word and continue and continue. And I don't forget who I am in Christ Jesus. So when I go out to the world, I don't forget who I am. I'm a saint. I'm a consecrated one. I'm separated unto God. I have miracle power on the inside of me. I have word of faith on the inside of me. I have holy emotions on the inside of me. I continue and I don't change. Whatever is happening around me, don't change me. Let God be true and every man a liar. Because everything that is within me is so sure that I change what's around me instead of, what, instead of allowing what is around me to change me. You have to decide. Do you want what's around you to change you? Or you want what's in you to change what's around you? We have been delivered from the fear of men. We don't have to be afraid of them. They are afraid of us. They say, wow, these people are weird. They believe in healing and they got it. These people are weird. They believe in prosperity. And yet they give their money. And how come the money is multiplied and it comes back to them? Do you get what I'm saying? We are God's signs and wonders to the world. They don't understand. When I was in China, they all talked about, you know, you eat this. They call it, yit, yit, you mean that, um, yit means if you eat something uh, that is not right, um, how do you say that? Yit means <laughs> they believe that there is a certain kind of food that produces too much energy in you. They call it heat. And if it produces too much energy for you, it's not good for you. And then on the other hand, if you eat another kind of food that produces too much cold in you, then it's not good for you. So it's that yin-yang, you know, that yin-yang belief. I said the minute I got saved, I got delivered from all that. <laughs> in me, there is neither heat, there is neither cold. In me, it's the life of God, the power of God, the divine health of God. Amen. Glory be to God. It's not what you eat, it's who you are. Thank you, Jesus. The Word of God says that even if you eat anything harmful, toxic, it will not hurt you. That's the power of life in you. The Bible is so real to me, so real to me. That's how you know you're saved. That's how you know you're saved. The Word of God becomes so real to you. It's your manual for success. It's your manual for living. Amen. I brought up my children by the Word of God. It's God's manual for success. Before I got saved, I used to read a lot of psychology books. I did psychology when I was in uni. But the psychology books confused me more than anything because there were so many schools of thought. And when I got saved, I opened the Bible. Everything is yes and amen, yes and amen, yes and amen. No confusion as far as the Word of God is concerned. Amen. Hallelujah. Absolutely. Yes is a yes. No is a no. Amen. So if God says you are successful, then by all means, I am successful. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And if the Bible says by the stripes of Jesus you are healed, then by all means, I'm healed. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the key is that some Christians say, what about that evangelist? What about evangelists? How come they die? How come they died of cancer? I don't care. I'm not them. I don't live in their mind. I don't know their private life. And I don't get saved because of them. I got saved by the Word of God. Amen. And one scripture in the Word that's so powerful is, let God be true and every man a liar. You need to, hold, you need to lay hold of that. Lay hold of that and stand strong on that Word. Otherwise, you'll be fluctuating. You'll be going back and forth and up and down, you know. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the Word. We are doers of the Word of God. So when the Word of God says praying in tongues, I'm a doer of the Word, so I pray in tongues. When the Word of God said pray, intercede, I'm a doer of the Word, so I pray, I intercede. So when the Word of God says about winning souls, I'm a doer of the Word, I go win souls. 
fishes of men. I go in souls. I go in souls. Hallelujah. Amen. As soon as we sat down and there was an unsaved person there, we talked to him. Amen. Talk to him about Christianity. Talk to him about salvation. Amen. A doer of the word of God. Amen. If you read that again, James 1.25, read that again, James 1.25. Whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty, which is the word of God, and continues therein, being not a forgetful hearer, don't forget what the word of God says about you, but a doer of the work. Can you read the last line with me? What's the last line? One more, again, together? Yes, come on. One more time. This man shall be blessed where? In his deeds. So if there are no deeds, there are no blessings. Amen. You can't afford to just have friends and don't witness to them. That means you don't care about souls. That means you don't care about them. You're just using them as your friends. You go to movies together. You go to dinner together. You go out together, but you never witness to them. Blessed in their deeds. Christians, we're doers. And when you do, it comes natural. And you're blessed. It's so natural. You're blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will lead you. You don't have to worry about offending them. You say, but Pastor Dora, the minute I witness, they will be offended. That's what you get because that's what you believe in. Even before you open your mouth, you believe that as soon as you witness, you will offend them. So that's where your faith is and that will happen according to your faith. We believe too much in the bad and too little in the good. Amen? Why can we turn around and say, I believe that as soon as I speak to them about the love of God, they will be touched, turn around and get saved. Love is very powerful. People know that you care for them. People know that you love them. Amen? They do. They do. They do. Even though, you know, they may appear offended, but on the inside, they know that you care for them. You love them. And then with your prayers... The angels will start working. The Spirit of God will start working. And miracles will start happening. Can you imagine how powerful the church will be? Amen. You know why my meetings were packed in China? It was because they heard about it. The word of faith went out and they told their friends and they all came and they came and they came. They said, you make the Bible sound so exciting. We've never heard the Bible preached like this. It's so exciting. Hallelujah. And they all came to me. Whoa, we really enjoy the Bible. I said, yeah, that's it. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible is exciting. Exciting. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So how many of us want blessed? How, how many of us want to be blessed? So you have to make the commitment to be a doer. Say with me, I'm a doer of the word. Amen. And I'm blessed. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Look for ways to act on the word to do kingdom works. Ask, ask the Lord, Lord, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do in church. Tell me what to do outside of church. Tell me what to do at work. Tell me what to do at home. Lord, come on, send people across my path. Let me witness to them. Lord, tell me something. Tell me what to do. Amen. Because your word says I need to be a doer. So tell me what to do. Open doors for me to do it. Lord, I want your assignments, your kingdom assignments. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't excuse yourself to be lazy. <laughs> don't excuse yourself to be lazy and don't excuse yourself to be stingy. Amen. Don't excuse yourself to be lazy. It's very easy to be lazy. All right. It's very easy. I mean, I heard the voice all the time. I heard the voice, Dora, you preached till 11 last night. You, you cannot afford to get up so early this morning. <laughs> I heard that when I was in bed. You know, you, you, you went to bed very late last night. You, you, you deserved, you need to sleep, sleep in this morning. <laughs> no, the Spirit of God just got me up. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't give yourself an excuse. 
Amen? I could easily give myself an excuse when I was on the plane or when I was in the train. Come on, it's time to rest. It's time to sleep. But somehow I just couldn't sleep. And I said, Lord, I, I have things to do. I have things that I needed to do. Tell me what to do. And the Lord just gave me, and he told me what to do. And I was able to, um, I was able to, to draft the whole Bible course. You know, we're doing Bible college in China in November. So I need to write something for them to print out and start distributing. So I wrote all of that on the train, finished. I say, praise the Lord. And there was once we were in the van and it was a bumpy ride and everybody was sleeping, but I couldn't sleep. I said, Lord, give me something to do. And then my niece called me from Hong Kong. Praise the Lord. And I counseled her, talked to her for over an hour on the phone. On the phone. I said, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Would you like your life to be productive? So you don't want to sleep for one third of your life? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. If you, if you would join me, just raise your hand. Say, Lord, <laughs> reduce my sleeping hours. <laughs> Make me more productive <laughs> and useful and energetic in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Go to Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. The Bible is very, it's very clever. The Bible is very clever. You know, there are 66 books in the Bible, but the Bible speaks as if one person is talking. In Malachi chapter 4, verse 2, you have Jesus described as the Son, S-U-N, the Son of Righteousness. Shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in His wings? Jesus des described as the Son, S-U-N, of Righteousness. And uh, if you look at Isaiah 61, Isaiah 61 verse 3, Isaiah 61 verse 3, if you look at the middle of that script, of that part, the middle of that, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. The Holy Spirit reminded me. Now, just now when I said to you, don't be lazy. You know, laziness, let me ask you, where is laziness? Where does it reside? In your soul or in your spirit? In your soul. Laziness is of the flesh, is in your soul. Anybody, everybody can be lazy. But if you cave into that seduction, you cave into the lust of the flesh, then you will lose, you will lose the direction, you lose the momentum of your spirit. Because your spirit, there is a momentum in your spirit. That's why when revival hits, they would be in church from morning, 8 o'clock to 12 at night. Have you read history of church revival? The history of revivals? They would stay in church from 8.30 in the morning to 12 o'clock at night. How on earth could they do that? How come they were not tired? No, because they would, they ought if they were spiritually stirred up. How many of you remember this word of God says that God does not? Sleep nor slumber. Your spirit does not sleep. So that means the more spiritual you are, the less you need to sleep. It's true. The more carnal you are, the more you need to sleep. And the Bible says you sleep, you sleep, and you sleep your life away. A person who is always sleeping is lazy. Lazy, you just waste your life away. You can be an alcoholic. I mean, you work, you work, you work because they're giving you money. But as far as the things of God are concerned, as far as spiritual things are concerned, you're either dozing off, or you're sleepy, or you're finding church boring, or you're finding the Word of God boring. Because it's the condition of your spirit. It's the quality of your spirit. You know, Christians, there are different qualities of Christian. There are different levels of Christian. It's true. I can tell. There are Christians that are highly valuable, precious. They have good quality. You can tell. 
And there are Christians that are so, so carnal, so childish. There are Christians that are so self-centered, so, so um, withdrawn to themselves. And there are Christians that are so worldly. You know, they have different levels, different kinds of quality. I don't know about you. Do you want to be a high-quality Christian? Do you want to be your spirit to be of high quality, your soul to be of an excellent spirit? The Bible says that Daniel has a spirit of excellence in him. Devils can detect that. Demons can tell what's the quality of your spirit. De devils can tell what's the quality of your spirit, what's the condition of your soul. Demons can tell. To the extent that you are excellent... To the extent that you're excellent, you'll be successful in your life. Why? Because demons, they become scared of you. But you have to pay the price. There is a price that you need to pay. It's the price of selflessness. You don't think about yourself anymore. It's the price of stepping out of the boat and letting God lead you. If he says, go to China, you go. You don't question, where's my money? What do I go to China for? I can't understand the language. No, as soon as you hear that unction, that voice, or that impression, or that knowing, you go. There's a, pri a price that you need to pay. As soon as you hear, go to New Zealand, you go. As soon as you hear, testify, you testify. Too many Christians, they're too shy to testify. What is being shy? You know, I explained to them when I was in China. Because in Chinese, to be shy is hai xiu. It's made up of two words. One is hai. Another one is xiu, hoi sao, you know. Hoi is the word that means fear. Hoi pa means I'm fearful. Sao means I'm ashamed. You put the two words together, is What? Shy, being shy, hoi sao. So to be shy means I'm fearful, at the same time I'm ashamed. So they are not for Christians. That kind of attitude is unbiblical. It's not for Christians. You need to testify. Why should you be shy? To be shy means to be self-centered. To be shy means you are so full of yourself that you got your testimony but you don't want to tell anyone. So there are things that in our life that the Holy Spirit will highlight for you that you need to get rid of. Just now I talked about putting it in the bin. Get rid of all the junk. There are things in your life that are stopping or hindering the move of God that you need to put in the bin. You need to get rid of. You need to plug out. So there will be a highway of Zion in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. So if you look at Malachi chapter 4, verse 2, unto you that fear my name shall the Son, that's Jesus, of righteousness. And then Isaiah 61, verse 3, the planting of the Lord. So how many of us know that trees need the sun? Do trees need the sun? Can they grow without sunlight? No. So do you need the Lord? Do you need the Word? Do you need His light? Do you need His energy? Amen. And I want to finish with this. Our God is into success, is into productivity, is into multiplication, is into expansion. Let me illustrate with this. Jesus was compared to, in the Word of God, as the seed. The Word of God says, unless the seed dies, it abides alone. So Jesus died, and what happened? He was not alone. He produced a lot of Christians. Right? And if you look at the natural, if you look at the natural, one seed can give you one tree, right? But one tree, the vine, will have many branches. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. So there's one to many. And then from the branches, we have the fruit, right? And from the fruit, a lot of times, one fruit can have many seeds. Sometimes, one fruit is one seed. But if you look at it, one seed with one tree 
and many branches and many fruits and many seeds. So those many seeds give you many trees again. And one tree would give you many fruit, and many fruit would give you many seeds and many trees. So in the natural, you can see that God has created this whole universe, this earth, for multiplication, for growth, for expansion, for prosperity. The same with your life. The same with my life. So God's purpose is multiplication and expansion. Once you have identified this purpose, you need to run with it. So don't be a loner. Don't be a low achiever. Start to expect. Start to plan to achieve. Start to multiply yourself. Multiply yourself. Multiply yourself in all you do. Multiply yourself. Influence. Be an influencer. Influence as many as you can. Influence as many people as you can. Amen? Influence as many people as you can. Praise the Lord. They used to believe that one couple should give birth to a lot of kids. I remember when I was little, there was a grandmother, and uh, she was um, having a, a grandchild on her back. What do you call it? Carrying, carrying her, her grandchild on her back in a, like a knapsack. And on that knapsack was written, one to million. Is like one couple give birth to a million of kids. <laughs> That's what they believe in. I'm talking about the, the farmers, the peasants. I'm talking about the pre-education uh, generation. Because it's true, when you have the whole farm, if you have many kids, then you have many hands. And then the family would prosper. It's that law of multiplication. Let's believe for that to happen in your life. Let's believe God to happen in our life. Let's close our eyes and pray.